In this video, we'll take a look at the Heathkit CO1 Code Practice Oscillator. The Code Practice Oscillator is a device for practicing Morse code. It's typically connected to a code key and produces a tone, rings a buzzer, or lights a lamp when the key is pressed. It allows someone studying for an amateur radio license to practice without sending over the air or needing a transmitter. Knowing Morse code is also a requirement for a popular Boy Scout merit badge in some countries. Code practice oscillators were a popular electronic kit made by many manufacturers, although hams often made their own. Early ones used vacuum tubes, switching to solid state in the late 1950s when transistors became affordable. The CL1 was Heathkit's first code practice oscillator kit. It was offered from 1959 to 1967 and typically sold for US $7.95. It was followed by the HD16 in 1967, which used a different circuit and provided volume and tone controls and headphone jack. This was followed by the HD1416 in 1975. It changed color schemes a couple of times, being rebranded as the HD1416A and HD1416H models, which were sold up to 1991. Heathkit also made some electronic keyers, which could be used as code practice oscillators. I've made a video on the Heathkit HD10 keyer. The CL1 is housed in a small box, it connects via screw terminals to a code key, and produces a tone in an internal speaker or flashes a lamp. It's solid state using one transistor and is powered by two C cells. The tone frequency is approximately 1000 Hz and it weighs just over one pound. Current consumption was specced at 10 milliamps when using the tone and 200 milliamps for operating the lamp. This was the only Heathkit model in the CO series. It uses the same Bakelite case as some Heathkit resistance substitution boxes and the Heathkit CR1 crystal radio. The front panel has two screw terminals for a code key and a slide switch to select either tone or lamp. A two inch speaker is mounted behind a grill. There's a small replaceable lamp for practicing using light. There's no on off switch as there's no power consumption unless the code key is closed. The front panel is removed from the case using four long screws. All wiring is point to point using terminal strips, the speaker, and switch. The battery clips are mounted on a small phenolic board. The transistor is in a socket. This was common at the time, late 1950s, early 1960s, when transistors were expensive and less reliable. Power is obtained from two C cells inserted in battery clips. There's a small permanent magnet speaker and audio transformer. The lamp, a number 14 type, is in a screw socket. Operation is simple. You connect a code key and practice sending. Usually you would use the tone position. The volume and frequency are fixed, and there's no facility for listening privately through headphones. The later HD16 model addressed these limitations at the expense of making that unit a little more expensive. The nominal frequency is 1000 Hz. The measured frequency of my unit was about 840 Hz. As you can see on the oscilloscope, it's nowhere near a pure sine wave, but this is expected for this type of circuit. You can also move the switch to the light position and send using the lamp. The idea was that if you wanted to practice with a friend, you could send over a longer distance at night using the lamp rather than the speaker. This unit was bought locally on Kijiji in late 2017. After putting fresh batteries in it, it worked. There was a modification that had been made. This metal bracket and a control had been added and wired in to allow adjusting the volume. I removed it and reverted the modifications in order to keep the original design. No holes or other changes had been made to the unit. I found some copies of the complete manual online. All of them seem to be based on the same original manual dated 10-12-1962. Despite the simplicity of the kit, 
The manual is 20 pages long with detailed assembly instructions, theory of operation, and information on learning and proper sending of Morse code. I needed to add some missing screws and replace the original lamp which had burned out. The original was a number 14 type. I had a similar but not as bright replacement on hand that I used. The design uses a 2N238 germanium transistor. In February of 1964, Heathkit made a design change to use a 2N407, also germanium transistor instead, and to add another capacitor. My unit has the older transistor and is missing the additional cap, indicating that it must have been purchased prior to February 1964. I measured the parts values and they were all within acceptable limits. A 100 ohm resistor across the speaker is missing. I'm not sure why it would have been needed in the circuit at all since the speaker has a much lower resistance of about 8 ohms. It works fine without it so I didn't add the missing part. One odd thing, I went through a number of Heathkit catalogs that I own and none of them contained a listing for the CO1 during the period that it was sold. I didn't find any on the internet either. The excellent Heathkit of the Month series by Bob Eckweiler has an article on the HD1416, CO1, and HD16 code practice oscillators with more information. When I was studying Morse code for my amateur radio license around 1977, I built my own code practice oscillator and mounted on the side of this key. My father was also studying and he bought a model from Radio Shack that had a very similar look to the Heathkit CO1, including the lamp. The CO1 is a nice little unit and was made for nine years. Despite that, surviving units seem to be quite rare. This one, with the original parts, still works well and is in very good shape for something that's over 50 years old.